All right, sis, give us a jingle. Spotlight session with T.S. Madison. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All with the show bit. Ladies and gentlemen, my first spotlight for this segment is a woman who you, some of you may know, some of you may not. But by the end of this session, you're definitely going to know who she is and what she represents. Um, I'm a fan of hers. I'm a fan of her mother's. And I'm also a fan of her very famous grandmother, honey, Miss Aunt Nesby. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I want to shine the spotlight on Miss Paris Bennett. Miss Paris Bennett! Oh my God! Girl, listen. The last time that you came to the house, you were actually watching the show, yeah. uh, watching my Queen Supreme Court show with the judges. I don't know which one of the judges it was, honey, but you came here and and then we were upstairs and you were singing. I did. And the people were writing lots of things down in the comment section after you were doing a lot of these oh, singing. I yeah, you did. You saw, I saw a few things. You saw a few things? <laughs> so did I. <laughs> well, I brought you here because I would really like to shine the spotlight on you right now because you're one of my favorite people that I watch singing and doing things online. And you're my favorite. Oh my God, I feel so honored to be here. <laughs> <laughs> did you get, did, did, did the people bring you any water? Did they give you water? I did, I did have water. You, have, you, did, artist, but... you don't know where it is? Where's the okay. water? There it is right there by your chair. Girl, we're going to make sure that you're good over here, honey. On the, on the, girl, you can't see the damn yeah. water. Girl, there she goes. God damn it. The hair. She can't see the water. It's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> so I made a list of questions for you right here. And I don't know. Some of these questions are going to surprise you. Okay. But this is the stuff that I want to shine a spotlight on you that I want to know and that the people want to know. Okay. I'm nosy. <laughs> you ready for all this stuff, Miss Paris Bennett? I'm ready, I think. All right. I think. You think? Honey, right here, you got to know. Okay. Well, my first question to you is who is Paris Bennett? Paris Bennett is a mom first. Mom? Yes. I you have, have children. I have an 11-year-old daughter. 11? Yes. She's 11 years old. Her name is Egypt. Mm. Uh, Paris Bennett is a singer. Mm. Paris Bennett is an actress. And then other than that, Paris Bennett is just a friend. I just like to hang out. And have fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the world came to know you as a contestant on the fifth season of American Idol. Yes. Uh, you finished in fifth place there. Mm -hmm. That was good. How did that really make you feel? Like, how did that... How, how, what was that whole experience like for you? Um, Idol definitely was an opening to the world, number one. Mm -hmm. Even though I had seen the world with my grandmother yes. and the sounds of blackness, um, I think it's different because people thought that, you know, like my grandmother was with me every single day. But it's different when you're the one that's on stage mm -hmm. and she's only in the audience or my mom's in the audience. And I had to be my own weight. So it introduced me to a lot of different artists that um, I didn't know, that I did know. Um, and then it opened me up to what is now my career. Girl, like, because you do come from a long line of great singers. Yes, you know, is that is. something that's hard for you to live up to? Like, coming from a line, a, a lineage of such strong vocals and you, you have a strong, does it feel like there's a weight on you? Um, it definitely is a weight. Mm. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I think a lot of us that have parents that are in the music business, we don't really get to share what our real Gifts feelings are, are mm. or what we feel as having parents that are in uh, the music industry. And I think it is a lot. It is definitely a weight because people expect for you to sing like whoever is in the business. Um, but we we do want you like, to sing. Like, I mean, we I mean we all we all we have do it, that time. We do expect for you to sing, girl. <laughs> you said, but they y'all be expecting me to sound like Ann Nesby. And well, listen, Ann Nesby will hit that. She, I'm still uh, wearing your name. <laughs> wearing your name. I be you know it, it is a weight, but it's a good weight because I also take that as um, my motivation to kind of keep going, and I try to always outdo myself mm -hmm. um, to make her proud. And it pushes you to to actually... To work. To work and to, yeah. and to outdo them. 
Okay. Uh, right. It's an outdo one. Yeah. Because this is like they put you in a competition with your own people. Yep. All the time. That is crazy. It's... Listen. Now, tell us about the experience being that young, performing for millions of people on a weekly basis. That experience that you had on being on the fifth season. You um, were young. You being were... on Idol, I was 16, getting ready to turn 17. Wait, you were 16? Yeah, I was 16. I had a prom on Idol. Um, homecoming was on Idol. <laughs> I graduated on Idol. Uh, everything, all of the rest of my high school year was on Idol. So what made you, I, I, I really want what made you say, like, I'm going to get up and go audition? Okay, so that wasn't what it was. So originally, I didn't want to sing. Like, I was trying to come out of the singing thing because everybody sings in my family. I wanted to do something different. What you wanted so to do. So I got a full scholarship um, mm -hmm. to go to Emory to study obstetrics and gynecology to be a perinatologist. I wanted to be a baby doctor. Wait, okay, because I, 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 I'm going to look at the audience out here that's watching, and I want to know, okay, you were studying, what is the word? Obstetrics and gynecology. Obstet Obstetrics. Obstetrics. <laughs> Which is just kind of an obstacle for me. Obstetrics. Uh -huh. and, and gynecology. gynecology. That's, the, that's the, uh -huh. the womb doctor. Ooh -ha. Yeah, to be a um, perinatologist. What is it? What is it? Perinatologist. Perrier? Perinet. <laughs> <laughs> a perinatologist, um, a delivery doctor. Okay, so you wanted to deliver babies. Yes. So you had this massive gift in your throat. Mm -hmm. Right here in your throat. And you didn't want to use that. You wanted to deliver babies. Well, it wasn't that I didn't want to use it. It just was that my grandma saying, my mom saying, everybody saying, and I was like, okay, I want to do something different. And so when I went to school, I was just so infatuated with Doctor This, Baby This. I would watch Discovery Channel all the time, Discovery Health Channel all the time. Minus the fact that I was already on Broadway, because I got on Broadway when I turned six years old. I was doing Once on This Island up until I turned 13, 14. So, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Oh, okay. Cause see, I, this is moving quick, and I really want to. I want to spotlight it. I want to dig deep into it. You know, and I want the people out there that are watching. You people that are out there that are watching, and you know, and you were Idol fans, and you know that this woman was was on um, American Idol. Would you have guessed that she wanted to be a baby delivery doctor? Me being on Idol was a bet that I made with my grandparents. The bet was if I made it through the audition series, mm -hmm. um, then I would continue to sing for the duration of my life. If I didn't make it, they would leave me alone and let me go to school so I could be a doctor. God was in their favor, not uh, mine. You no, know, you say God was in their favor. <laughs> yeah, he was in their favor. So what happened? Mine. What happened? So we made the bet. Um, I was here in Atlanta at my school. Shout out to Stars Mill High School. What is it? Stars, Stars Mill? Mill High School in Fayetteville, Georgia. So anybody out there at Stars Mill High School in Fayetteville, Georgia. Um, and we were there and my granddad was like, okay, so we got to go to Greensboro. So we were going to go to Greensboro originally uh -huh. for my um, audition. And something happened. I can't remember what it was. I think it actually it was Charlotte first. And something happened in Charlotte that made us have to go to Greensboro for the audition. Um, but it was like a week in there that was like missing. And I was like, yes, I'm going to go to Idol. I can continue to go to school. This ain't working out for them. Well, then they came back, sent them emails like, oh, we're doing auditions. They're going to be back up in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother and nobody knows this. But my grandmother... Wait, you got to tell them in the microphone. My grandmother... Uh-huh. Miss um, Ann Nesby. Miss Ann Nesby. Her and I sat two days outside amongst the thousands in Greensboro. We sat in lawn chairs. Outside, everybody was doing all types of stuff. Singing, smoking, all Wait, types of stuff. What were they smoking? Cigarettes? They smoking cigarettes. Or weed? And sing, it was cigarettes. It no was weed? Cigarettes. It wasn't no weed. You don't smoke cigarettes, do you? I don't smoke cigarettes. You smoke weed, though. <laughs> I don't smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke oh cigarettes. Oh, my God. You have your little joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> In my little pocket book. And so nobody was rolling up outside when y'all No one out? was. But we were out there in Greensboro. We sat outside two days. We finally got a wristband to even go inside of the 
uh, Coliseum that we were at. Mm -hmm. um, I was, oh my God, my number was so far. It was so far. Like the whole entire gymnasium was filled. With people. With people. And I remember the man saying that we were going to start from one side of the gym and, you know, they were going to call each section mm -hmm. for you to go down and audition. Lo and behold, my section was the first section to go down. My granny was sitting at the top. She was being loud and obnoxious. What did she do? Tell me she about this. They're thing. like, yes, Jesus, Jesus. Uh -huh. God, in the name uh -huh. of Jesus. In she the said, name in the name of, of Jesus. That's what she said. She was praying. And I was walking down the stairs like, okay, God. So Miss Ann was saying, in the, in the name of Jesus, yeah, she, in the name. She was ready. Me, I was like, okay, it's too many people. I'm ready to go. I'm sleepy. You got to keep wearing the same outfit every time you come because they're taping. They're filming, so the outfit that I wore, I did not know that. I had to go to the cleaners several times in Greensboro to get my outfit clean because you had to keep the same one on that they saw you in originally. So I had that on all the way up until you guys saw me get my yellow tickets out. Wait a minute. So, all right, <laughs> so this brings me to this question that I have. I know that your NDA has expired, and... You just poured us a little bit of tea on uh -huh. what goes on behind the scenes. Is there any other stuff that you can disclose of like what happens behind the scenes of American Idol? Oh yes. Um, it's not really a uh, lot. Do, do I need to get my teacup together, girl? Are you about <laughs> are you about to pour us? <laughs> are you about to pour us a little tea? It's not bad tea. It's not bad tea. Okay. But I can say that we definitely have to have what's mandatory is a mental um, evaluation. We go through a two day mental And this evaluation. is for the for the contestants that make it far? Yes. Or this is that's, not that's the contestants that make it to Hollywood. So if they say, Yeah, you get the little yellow ticket, you go into the mental report <laughs> reporter's office. Because they need to know how you're gonna react when they say you going home. <laughs> they wanna know you're not gonna kill them. They wanna know you able to take all of that in. So they keep asking you a series of questions that are the same question, just in different orders. Like, so are you sure you're going to be okay when they say it's time to go home? So they basically tell you that you're going home in the show. Like they tell you, they tell you this, like they don't even, they don't even say that you're going to win. They just say like, listen, bitch, you're going to get all the way down here and you're going home. Well, they give you the, the scenario of if you don't make it to top 24 or during this Hollywood week, we're only picking... 24 people to go to the top 24. So during this time when we say, hey, you didn't make it, uh -huh. you gonna go crazy. Or, or you gonna what be, you gonna do? You gonna say bye. So they have a psychologist there that's there to talk to you. Oh. Yeah. So okay. everyone has to go through. I think that's very helpful because once you do get like eliminated from the show, some people do go through like a downward spiral. Really? Yeah. yeah Did yeah. you experience that? No, I was ready to <laughs> ah, you was like, bitch, I'm tired of this. I was ready to go. I'm sick of wearing the same motherfucking outfit over ready. and over. I was ready, but on the actual show, once you make it to the top 12 or top 24, top 24, you're dressing yourself, so you're bringing your own suitcase, own clothes. Once you get to top 12, then Tell you them. start getting stylists. Hold the tea. So they, getting... also, so they hire stylists and stuff like that to come start dressing. When you make it to top 12. When you make it to 12. So you got the bus past 24. So, so you 24, got... you dress in your own self. Mm. 20, 23, you 23, still dressing you yourself. you still dressing. 22, all the way down till they get to that week where they're picking the top 12. Mm -hmm. Then the top 12, now you have a stylist that comes every week. And then you're going shopping with them, and y'all are putting with together whose money? Time. Whose money is it? Oh, they give you your coin. Yeah, Basha. Yeah. So you were getting paid, even though you were you. Were... Oh, see, see, but me, I'm a different kind of girl. Oh, see, wait a minute. Tell the us the coin that I was getting. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, for my outfit. Wait, she's going to talk about the coins that she was the getting. The coin I was getting for my outfit. Uh huh. Um. See, I like the shop, and my grandmother and my shoppers and all of that. Well, they've they've had you know, they've had money. I've been pulling pieces since I was little. Since you were small, see, I was you know. So I had outfits I wanted to just show in general. Uh huh. And so I already had this. So I was like, oh yeah. So they'll give you your little per diem for your week, and I love to save money. So I was like, oh okay, we don't need that. I already got that. Thank you. And my hair pieces was like so my American Idol. Hair, you know? If you did not know. <laughs> Your stipend was one in her purse. <laughs> and she was pulling out her clothes that she 
this is another T. Come the on, The hairstylists that are up there. What? Poor. Poor. Oh, the hairstylists, uh -huh. when they, you know, when they tell y'all that they did our hair and all of that, some do get their hair done. Of course, you know, the people oh. get their hair done. Oh, you mean but the, okay. some of the, like, The lighter you know, skin people. Yeah. The color African of my American American girls, <laughs> some of them did get their hair done. But, like, there was a few times, I know when I did uh, These Foolish Things, mm -hmm. I had a slick back ponytail. Um, they said that they did my hair, and they did not. Because he said he used grease to slick back my grease? ponytail. And I was like, oh, no, no. Like, Vaseline like, or grease? Like, you he know. He said he had used a series of grease. Blue and Magic? holding spray in the People magazine. I'll have to bring that for you so you can see it. God, you should have brought it tonight. Um, they, That was that. A lot of my hairstyles, they did not do, but they did say that they did do it. And were these Caucasian people doing black hair? Yes. Yes. It was. And the first show, yeah. did you know the first show, the top 12 show, when I did the Stevie Wonder song, it took me, they had to wait to start the actual live. We started late on that because I started crying on purpose because of the makeup. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> Casket. Oh, you was giving casket sharp real Yes, name. and so I started, I do cry if I don't like, if stuff, if my food is ugly, I cry. Uh -huh. Makeup's ugly, I cry. Just things, I just choose to cry. Okay. But I cried so that my makeup could start running so that I can go on. And do it yourself. Yes. Because you could actually do makeup yeah. yourself. And I, yeah, I love brows. Those are my favorite. Yeah, because your brows are thick, sitting tonight, honey. Sitting. But you know, I microblade. Yeah, I know. We're going to get down to these things in your personal life. But here's the thing for me, and I didn't want to get, you know, into this until like mid-show, but we're at the top of the show. What was the song that got you in the door? The song that got me in the door was, um, well, some people say the Dixie Chicks, because that is my favorite, Cowboy Take Me Away. I did sing that first. But I honestly think the song that got me into the door was my Billie Holiday rendition of Take Five. Can you do a little bit of that? Yes, <laughs> please. please. Um, won't you come and take a little time with me? Just take five, oh yeah. Stop your busy day and take the time out to see I'm alive, oh yeah. Though I'm going out of my way just so I can pass by each day. Not a single word do we say. It's a better mom and out of place. I know our lives are for me. I feel tingles down to my feet. When your smile gets discreet, it sends me on my way. Wouldn't it be bad enough to be so polite? You could offer a light. Start a little conversation, now it's all right. Just take five, oh, yay. Yes! Yay! Oh, my goodness, yes! I remember. Okay, so that got you. Yeah. That got you into into the thing. That got you there. Yeah, because I guess a lot of people my age don't sing jazz, didn't sing jazz, didn't well, know about jazz. I, I I really I just enjoyed that. Oh, see, that, may, that just you know I want to sing that to my piece of tray, <laughs> girl. Mm. <laughs> Quiet on the set, Chi Chi. <laughs> so okay, so that got you in. Yes. You moved on to top 12. Mm -hmm. You had these awful stylists. These, these, these. No, I had a good stylist. Oh, I just me. didn't. You, you just, wait a minute. Didn't okay, let me. You moved on to the top 12. You pocketed all of Idol's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a great stylist. His name is Art Khan. Art Khan. He is my favorite. I love him. He dresses me. He does now, like, dress me for different things that I have to do when I have to go out for Idol stuff. He does dress. But he still got paid, but you kept the stipend. Yeah, he was all for it. Okay, so y'all was Look, in. Y'all was in. Y'all had worked it out. Yeah. Okay, bye, shop. Worked it out. So, hey, come on. We'll get down to that <laughs> down the end of the show. <laughs> so you, you you got that. And then you moved on and you got. Uh, top 10. You got top 10. See, the gist is you want to get into top 10 because once you make it to top 10, you're on tour. So if you get nixed off after top 10, you're still on tour. Oh, that's a great thing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the tour. Girl, give me the pour me the tea about the tour. Tour mm. was quite um because this wouldn't be experience. your first time being on tour. No, 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 no. It was my first music tour, but not my first tour in general. Because when you do Broadway, 
who are on tour and you're on shows all the time, just not as many um, in one. We did 60 cities, 90 days for the tour, the, the idol tour. Oh. And you yeah. made money doing this. Yeah. That you were able to not just you wasn't you wasn't just taking idols <laughs> styling money and pocketing it. Yeah, you actually made the money and you yeah. still pocketed they styling See, money. There we go. Look at God, He knows. <laughs> he knows how to bless you hey, when you need a blessing all the time. Hey Bob, and all of this stuff went on, and then you got the top ten, and you on tour, you did this stuff, and you made it all the way down to five. All right, right. Mm-hmm. You, you got the top five, and then you were eliminated. Yes. And you said you enjoyed your elimination. I did because getting eliminated off of Idol, um, it wasn't so much that I was like super ready to go, but it was like, whew, I can finally just kind of like let loose because nobody knew I was going to school. Everybody else's schedule was an adult schedule. So mm-hmm. they got up in time enough for sound check, mm-hmm. be there, get mm-hmm. dressed. Mine was not. I was up every morning at 6.30. I had to be in school with my school tutor at 7.30. I was in school from 7.30 to noon. From noon, I went to go rehearse my song. Once I finished rehearsing my song, then I was back in class. When I left class, then I had to go be styled and done up, all that kind of stuff. And then it was time for the show. So I was still in school on you top were, of you doing... You six, 16? And then I had interviews, and then... I had yeah, press you, days, you need, yeah, you so yeah, I was ready to just be like, Ooh. you was ready. To, it was a lot. It was a lot on you, and you also you needed to be paid. So, girl, gather all the coins. <laughs> now, after the idol, mm-hmm. things got personal for you. Yeah. So I'm gonna dig into something. Okay. Now, after you finish idol, the next big headline for you was that you were pregnant. By an undisclosed, high-profile man. <laughs> what can you tell us about this situation? I have a beautiful baby. You've been very secretive about his identity. By the way. <laughs> so what can you tell us? I have a beautiful baby. Um, by a, a beautiful man. Uh-huh. Um, and we do. We just co-parent. It's cute. Wait, wait. So you co-parent. <laughs> we co-parent. Which brings me to this question. Where is the relationship today we co-parent and we exist for her um i think because i was young when i met him and really it was like kind of just like a fast moving relationship that was cool was he a fan it was nice was he a fan Child, baby, he... i probably was a fan I oh you were that. a fan of his come on high profile oh. man <laughs> no but... we're not gonna ask you his name are we and we he spend... was... He was nice, but we had a very, very rough patch. Um, That relationship also taught me a whole lot about Mm. life, I think, very, very fast. Um, It was a domestic relationship. What does Um, that mean? Domestic sounds like home. We lived together. Oh! (laughs) We did did live together, and it was a rocky relationship. Um, It did turn into a domestic relationship. And it probably was more or less probably both of us kind of 50-50 on the domestic. Because um, I'm not Tina, so I, I can't let you do the Oh, you meant domestic life. Oh, yes, I mean domestic Oh, life. you mean <laughs> domestic violence. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, yes. You mean hand I throwing. I mean hands. Okay, you mean, pu- you I mean, mean pussy popping on the handstand. Oh, yeah. you mean domestic like I mean, not- like, take your earrings off. Oh, okay. You didn't mean domestic as in, yeah, we live together, no, love yeah, together. No, yeah, we live together, and I'm very domestical. You meant home. domestic as we live together, love together, and that nigga, I threw hands yeah, at that. Yeah, we was throwing hands. Yeah, that kind. You give all that, Miss Paris? I do when I need to. You know, I watch a lot of Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um. <laughs> so what? Okay, I just, now I'm, I'm straying a little bit. What did Miss Ann say about this? You know what? That was a very rough patch for my mom and my, my grandmother and all of us, honestly, just because I am, we all are very, very closely knitted, but we all, here's the thing. When you have a relationship, she go, and forward. this is for people that are, you know, in relationships and stuff. Uh-huh. When you're in a relationship and you are with someone and you only are going to be mad at them for a second, don't tell your family members because they are mad at them forever. forever. But you go back. 
So for me, it was still that kind of a thing with me and him until I got tired. And then, um, you know, it had got a little reckless. Uh -huh. And so then, you know. I had to let it go. But my grandma and them, I would kind of keep them out, out of your my business. Thing. Yeah. Right. I get it. I but get you know, it. my mom, she always in the bushes. She ready. Yeah, well, you have to water. My so. mom always ready. No, you it's been a few water. times she didn't have to knock and buck. Mama done came and knock too. Knock and buck Ooh, him a few baby, times. Yeah, but listen, all that stuff, you, you've really <laughs> kept secret. Now, y'all are not together anymore. No. So by you not. But not, we don't have any bad blood. The money, right? Girl, yeah, what's the is. child support like, girl? We, is we, the child support good? <laughs> what is the thing? Egypt loves her her little card, a little credit card, and she gets life. It, it's Egypt. A high profile <laughs> husband's girl. <laughs> so, so Miss Paris, what were you doing in between the time, like you know, to support yourself, like after Idol, after even this, like what what is Miss Paris been been doing? Um, after Idol. Well, of course, it wasn't, like, directly baby mm -hmm. after that. But, um, of course, I did the Princess P album. And that from Idol, I was already on the road with other people, like Queen. Um, they sing another one by Stuss. I went on the road with them. Andrea Bucelli. Um, I have actually been on the road since that show. And I, and I have no complaints. I actually thank them a lot for doors that have been open. You, so you um, made lots of money. So yeah, like I, I'm still working to this day and that, I mean, really that's me. I'm always working. I'm always figuring out something different, always doing things. But I can say after Egypt, I kind of tapped into um, some of the personal talents that I like to do. Like I said, like makeup and I love doing hair. And so basically like during this time you were doing makeup and hair too? Mm -hmm. And singing. Well, and getting that motherfucking my child support, man. You just don't take care of the baby. You got to take care of her mother, too. Take care of everything. No, You know? You know? So, what about Broadway? Like, do you enjoy Broadway more than you do, like, anything else? And, and what is Broadway like to you? It is heaven. I love Broadway. Oh, girl, I see. She loves Broadway. <laughs> I love Broadway. Um, I love Broadway just because it's a mix of everything, and they're not just demanding one thing, but they challenge you more in your acting. Even though people think, like, oh, it's musical, 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 they really don't spend that much time on the music part. It's really you telling the story. You better know your yeah, lines. you better know your lines. And they teach you that your place can be taken real quick because your understudy is always in the corner. Um, This last run of the Wiz that I just did, uh -huh. I got poked or scraped across my eye um, from the tornado because, you know, we do all this flipping and turning to the death. Yes, I learned quickly that, that my they understudy will... was ready. And I swear, I cried. Like, no! no. Oh, wait, did they replace you? They didn't replace me just for that time being because I couldn't see. So I couldn't do our thing. Well, girl, the, her, the tornado was coming through like that, girl. Oh, yeah, we dance and flip, and they've got these costumes, and they're doing all that. So it was the whiz, whiz so it was the black version of uh, Yes. It was, why don't you ease on down, ease on down yes. the floor. <laughs> Yes, it was that. Are you, are you laughing at me because, so I, I got because that note was was the? It was nice. Wait, wait, wait. Were you laughing at me because that note was kind of piercing, <laughs> or was it? It was was the key off. It was, it was, it was tears. It was all. It was. It was. A, it was ease on down. Ease on down the road. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good well, one. you can't be on it. I won't be alone. Why don't you ease on down? Ease on down. Ease on down. Ease on down. Ease. Oh. Come on. Now that was it. I be watching y'all. <laughs> I be trying to learn. I need a vocal coach. Would you be my vocal coach? Yeah, we can do it. We can vocal coach. What, I mean, what are you, what are you trying to? Actually, I want you to vocal? coach me on how to get good child support. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it for you. Oh, my child. I can get it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so... You know, I asked you earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and I was talking to the people that are out there watching. I know y'all watching. Earlier about you being the, the, the daughter and the granddaughter, honey, coming from a lineage of great singers, and you being the daughter, the granddaughter of Miss Ann Nesby. What is that like? It's fun. Because who people see on, like, stage and all that is total opposite of who I get. Um, 
as you know or may not know, my grandmother was a little more heavier. Like when she first came out, she was a heavy girl, mm-hmm. and so that was like my grand. That was like I'm oh. a fan of your grandma. Like, I'm a fan of Miss Nell, honey. And then you know she turned around and got skinty on me. Honey, she got skinny. On me. Listen, she got skinny after she stopped wearing his name. <laughs> I'm sure. It's a good on me. But my grandmother is so. I swear, she's the sweetest lady ever. She's so passive. I totally don't get any of that from her because I'll be ready to let people have it. Um, but she, she's just like the cooking. She cooks. She does whatever you ask. She, she does what a grandma to, does. Yeah, she just grandma at the end of the day. And then when it's time for her to be, you know, Aunt Nancy, she's Aunt Nancy. But all the time, anytime, she is grandma. You can call her whenever. You can call her 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Whenever she gonna answer the phone, and she ready to talk. She Girl, your grandma can sing. Do you hear me? She like sings your, down. your grandma sings down. Your grandma has like this this deep soul in her throat. See, we get it from my great grandmother who passed away. R.I.P. Um, but my great grandmother used to sing all the time. She always sang. Her mother. Like, yes. She always sang. She's who introduced me to Mahalia Jackson. So, because that was one of my questions. Like, mm-hmm. are you are you growing up with with the, with the, with, the, with the stellar grandmother? Mm-hmm. You've been you've encountered lots of famous people, mm-hmm. and you Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson is is def- that I grew up listening to my grandmother sing, my great grandmother singing it countless times, um, which. Is how I got the role um, to be Little Mahalia with my grandmother doing the older Mahalia. We do a show together. Oh the, my God! The I life watched, story of Mahalia Jackson. You, I, I watched some of it, <laughs> and I watched your grandmother say, "Soon oh, that's we'll be done." I love what she does. Say. Just soon and we be done. She, oh, that is my song. Yes. She, it was so, it, it had me moved. Like, it moved It moved me so hard when she was doing it. I was just, like, really sitting there like, wow. Yeah, like, that's no kind of we were No I was like, Miss Ann. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were introduced to. And then my great-grandfather, he's a pastor. Oh, so y'all, go, y'all um, come from the church. In Rockford, Illinois. He has his own church. Mm-hmm. Um, Macedonia Baptist Church. So I am a Baptist kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Baptist kids, we do a lot. Uh, Baptist kids rule because I'm, I'm also <laughs> Baptist. Before I became non-denominational, because oh, okay, yes. I prayed all to many God. He all wait a minute. What was that? Be careful. <laughs> the only God I know is Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but see us, we Might had be Allah a little bit. We had two different <laughs> um, cultures in our family. So my mom's side is African American, so that was the whole Baptist thing, and then you have. My dad, who was Palestinian, um, Middle Eastern descent, so it's Muslim talk there. And no, I don't. The uncircumcised peoples. <laughs> Them peoples don't get circumcised over there. Well, I think my dad is because like I came out nice. I think like uncircumcised kids are nice. <laughs> come out. <laughs> I think my dad's circumcised because I think I think I don't know. Uncircumcised parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think, because I'm pretty sure he is. But I, <laughs> he cute. I'm going to show you him on the phone. Yeah, but that's your daddy. He is, but I, I'm going to say that, like, uncircumcised parents just seem like they would probably be dysfunctional. I, I, it's like, who wants to push back all that? So you've had uncircumcised men before? Well, no, but I've seen a few Peter Weeders before. So you've that never like had an uncircumcised man? Doorknob. You've never had an uncircumcised man? No, but I did have this one guy who just was like, you know, I'm one of those people when the dude be like, yeah, I'm pecking. Like, oh, you want to see? I want to see. Okay, you a girl after my own heart. Don't be yeah, teasing me, motherfucker. Let me Show see. me. Let me see. Show. And then when you Where pull it that? down, it look like a doorknob or a little. Or now a doorknob. Door. Listen, a doorknob can get deadly. No, but if they're like, you know, like, I don't know. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all that me. I you know, she said these that. things, and I really wanted to understand <laughs> what she said. Uncircumcised parents. Like, hmm. Uncircumcised so this parents means have that, dysfunctional kids, I think. All right, so I want you guys, because, you know, I'm very, I'm a digger. Allegedly. And I'm digging into these things, but I'm digging into them silently. So I just found out that the child support person is circumcised. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, he He yeah. circumcised. Uh-huh. Is he Palestinian? No. He's African American. He's African American. Oh. Real African American from Wakanda? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he ain't from Wakanda. No, no, no. Oh, child, I don't want to talk about him no more. Wakanda. I only want to talk you about me as from... I only want to talk about me as from Wakanda. <laughs> I did talk to a Wakanda man before. I did. He was from like Africa. He was Nigerian. He was a little bit too possessive. And then he wanted to have like six wives. <laughs> no. But he was definitely from Wakanda. He was from one of them places over there. His but it was. Mama and Brady, you know when they from Wakanda, they got them calling. Yeah! <laughs> but Nigerian. Yeah! Nigerian men. See how she tried to skip. She tried to skip that. Bit. That's you thought you, did you think you was gonna sit here and you be as young as you is? It wasn't gonna get a little dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. They are great. They are great. They are great. They're great. They are great. Girl. Get you one. Uh, listen, I've had a few, sus. Oh, okay, okay. You, listen, so you, then you know what I'm talking about. You walked into a house, honey, that has seen many, <laughs> many nationalities. <laughs> He's gotten you a Middle Eastern? I've had Middle Eastern. That's how I know about the circumcision. Oh, your, fr- your um, what's his name? Craig. No, Craig is not. No. <laughs> no, 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 But Craig, Craig talked about the, the, the Dubai person. I saw that last time I was Craig here. Craig is trash, He had like a commercial honey. with the Dubai. Listen, Craig Middle has done Eastern many things, honey, game. but what he has not done is me. <laughs> 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 now let's slide on back down to the DMs of the music industry. Do you think the music industry has treated you fair? You know what? So this is my personal opinion about the music industry. I feel like I have grown up on what is to me real music. Aretha Franklin. Mm. Have you ever met the Queen? I did a long time ago. You did? Yeah. That's true. I love her. Bless her. Heart. Um but like real, real music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now, not saying that the music that is made now is not real to the artists that are delivering it. It's just that having my grandmother um, and, and her friends, Regina Bell, mm. and um, oh my God, Mary from SOS, mm-hmm. like having those type of friends, I, I just, I can't sell myself to do the... You know, I, I I can't be um, just giving you a, a, a chorus, a cool chorus. I, I'm used to the songs with the real verses, the real uh, chorus line, the real B section, the to, real to something that yeah. we we would, we would call today. It would be called classics. Yeah, things that be, that are classic. Yeah, I'm in music. it for longevity, not yeah. just for um, the right moment. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So I think that it's fair to... Well, I want to say this, and it's going to be very messy. I don't give a fuck. Oh, my God. It's going to be messy. (laughs) When we talk about classics. Okay. Is there an artist today, a top artist today that you think sings classics? Well, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, because we know some of the people that you just named, songs from 20, 30, 40 years, Mm -hmm. are classics. Do you think any person now, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's, the Scissors, the I some, would say the her. Summer Walker sing? She does sing. I would say her. Do are, but are they making classic music now? Her. The, the girl, girl her. her. I think she does what would be considered classic some, from time now, like time. Time, time out. Like in our, 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 in our generation. Yeah, I think that she makes pretty, pretty much what what would be considered classic. To my, right to, in my, in my I opinion, love Adele. So Adele really honestly is like what I Well, think. Adele sings a little but bit she's, different she's music. She's a little different music. But her, yeah, I, I think her is a good generational classic girl right now. Okay. I, I don't care. Honestly, my playlist doesn't really play um, mm-hmm. 
a lot of people of new age music. Yeah, because mine does not. It doesn't. I'm always in the um, '90s, and even step back into the '80s, '70s. I might be pushing yeah, it. It does play Brandy. I love Brandy. Brandy is like one of my faves. Um, it plays her. Brandy or Monica. Brandy. I, it plays Brandy. Um, Brandy or Monica. <laughs> Brandy. So you said Brandy. All right. Okay. Cool. Because you know, um, I, I like Monica. I like Monica. I like, there's, there's, there's I there's like Brandy. Songs. I like Brandy too. I'm not gonna sit up here. I'm not because people be thinking that I be hating on Brandy. I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I'm hating on Brandy. But I'm just. I like Monica. I think Monica gives you um. Gives you sing along girl because like everybody can sing along with her because she like doesn't give you challenge. I'm not trying to be like shady, but it's not like a chat. She doesn't have. She doesn't do a lot of runs and stuff like that. So like, you can mimic Monica her. or Brandy. Monica mm. is very sing along. You don't think? No. Like Brandy, you can't just be doing the vocal bible runs. You got to listen to her before you can, you know, redo her. Gave my heart to you, cause I love with you. Always love that you. Not a lot of people can do that. Do but it like, again. Do it again. Gave my heart to you, cause I thought love was true. Always felt that love and you. I gave you the best of me. You know what? No, come on, now you do. Now you sing along. You got to sing like Brandy. You got to listen to her. Like you have to really listen. So this is why they give they've given her this title, the vocal bible. Yes, because you know she's got um, there's one good, run, she does good runs. Like you can gotta go back and be like play that again, play that again, cause like she does. She does. Sing a, a verse from Have You Ever, cause that's what I know from her. Have you ever? Um, have you ever loved her and love from her just about anything? Uh huh. Uh, well, I gotta find a good part of that song. Just like the boy is mine, I think that that Monica ate her on the boy is mine. Okay, Maddie, we're done with this conversation. No, no, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Don't you dare! You're not finished yet. <laughs> Monica did not eat. You need to give it up. How about Eva? Eva. Uh, it's not hard to see. The boy, boy is, is mine. mine. No. I'm sorry that you. Mm-mm. Let's talk about the, the other one they have together. Well, let's do Loving it. Loving you is hard. Brandy ate. Eight. No, ma'am. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> see, now I'm going to sound like a Brandy hater. Is it because? I don't know. Maybe Brandy because. Eight. There are some songs. Like, Monica does have this new song that she has out. I actually like that song from her. I don't know what it's No, called, I want to go back to The Boy Is Mine, what everyone knows. I don't want to go to any of the new things, new that, the new it. stuff that any of the people that may not buy their music now knows. I'll just go back to the old stuff. You got to see her tell me that you feel like that Brandy ate Monica? Yes. All the time. Both Must you do the things you do? Keep on acting like a fool. You need to know it's me, not you. And if you didn't know it, bitch, it's true. Think they used to realize, try to understand why he is a part of my life. No one's carrying you inside. You can say what you want to say. <laughs> From this truth, you can't escape. <laughs> when will you get the picture? Right there, eight. Right, eight, right, eight, right. eight. When will you get the picture? What? Come on, they ate her with one one little spot. That little area right there made you feel yes. it. Yes. When will you get that picture? Uh-uh, so you didn't... When will you get the picture? You'll get the picture. It's the you. Like, you see how she finessed that? It's finesse. <laughs> it's finesse. It's Brandy. It's Brandy. Okay, girl, we not... You gotta I'm... give me another one later. Like, uh, another girl, we're gonna do, do some more stuff later on, honey. Because... Girl. Well, girl, let's just move on for that because we're going to come back to that, honey, on our song association stuff because I'm going to get you. <laughs> now, now, listen, you moved on and you are with someone now by the name of Michael. Yay. Whom you appear extremely happy with. Yes. How y'all got together, girl? Give me the team. I love him. Oh, you love him? I love him. You love you some him? I love me some Michael. 
Ain't that one of Brandy's songs too? I love me some Beyonce. Girl. Oh my goodness. No. That is not Brandy. That's Tony. Tony. Oh. I love you some Beyonce. Yes. I love that. But yes. Michael. I love Michael. He's such a sweet guy. He's very nice. Well, you're open with this relationship, honey, because you was not open with that other one. <laughs> you was real quiet about that high profile <laughs> baby daddy. <laughs> no. How y'all yeah. got together? How did y'all meet? Um, Michael and I, we met a mm-hmm. long time ago. Um, time went by, like long period of time went by. Um, met again, ended up doing some work together. And then literally, like, we just hung out as friends. We were friends forever. And then friends just kind of shifted and turned into what we are now. Lovers. <laughs> now, girl, being that y'all are lovers, honey, you do know that there was some controversy surrounding that. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Especially regarding his ex-wife. Uh-huh. The lady Kiki. Yes. <laughs> well, there was no controversy with me. It was more, I don't have any controversy. I don't have any beef. I love her. I love her music. She can I sing. Love, she can sing. She can sing down. Yeah, I down. Have, I have no beef. Because guess what? I don't Instagram beef. Oh. Yeah, I don't. So Instagram. that's one of the misconceptions that's kind of out there that y'all are beefing or y'all done beefed or something like that. We're not beefing. Well, I'm not beefing. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me clear this up. I'm not beefing with anyone who can't say anything to me in person. So, like, people are doing things online. So, like, the shade room and all that. Like, if they're creating the the picture. So, you think that it's the social media people that are creating the picture? Definitely. I think social media makes a lot of things be a lot bigger than what it really is. Have you have you spoken to her? I have not. Okay. Will you speak to her? I totally would. I'm a lady first. Okay. Before anybody. All right. Yeah. I okay. would totally speak to her. I would totally... Give my piece there, but right now it seems that we have been doing a lot of computer things. Computer. Computer chat. Snapchat. Oh, oh okay. We're, we're, we're computer chatting just because I feel like when Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, well, when Shade Room borrowed my picture that I posted, okay, um, <clears throat> and made it there to do. Uh-huh. Thank you. I'm glad you guys come to my page. I love that. Uh Um, But when they borrowed my picture, I think they wanted me to be ashamed, but I wasn't. I posted it. He still is my MCM, and that's that. And if only you knew that. Still mean that. Hashtag. I must have rehearsed my life. I'm just saying. (laughs) It's Uh, just that. I don't have any bad blood. All right. So this, so basically, this is this hasn't interrupted any of your family structure at all. Oh no. Okay. Or your job as a singer in the industry? Absolutely not. You can't. So bitch ain't trying to stop your bag. No. And no one should let anybody stop their bag. Has not stopped mine. We don't even have the same audience. I'm just saying, we don't. Okay. (laughs) We don't. (laughs) We don't. We don't have the same audience. Like, I mean, Broadway. Oh. Singing. I mean, she sings a lot more than I do in areas and I'm just trying to sing Broadway and you know do my life. You're trying to do you. I like doing me and I like for for you know my space to be my space but you know my space is gone and deleted so. Oh. Okay. So we love Michael. Hey Michael. He loves you too. Hey Michael. Listen, I'm staying way back out of that. I don't want to have nothing to do. This is my sister, my <laughs> hell. I love everybody, but God damn We love damn everybody. It. Same. <laughs> Look, we love everybody. Ain't no beef. If she was here right now. You'd hug her neck. I would hug her. I would speak to her the same. I mean, it's it's an ex. It's not like a current. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it a current before? It was not a current before. And here's the thing. Clear it up, clear it up, yeah, so, let me because they want to know. If clear you are my friend, I have friends from 20 plus years. All my friends is on my Instagram. Every every friend I have on Facebook, whatever. I've been friends with the same people since us changing diaper, getting our diapers changed mm-hmm. together. I don't use the word friend lightly. Right. Um, And in this industry, as you may know. I do. People say sis. 
Uh-huh. People say bro. Uh-huh. People say whatever. It don't mean you know good. It doesn't mean that you guys are really friends and bro. That right. means when I see you at the next event, hey girl. Hey sis. But we're not holding phone numbers. We're not calling each other. We ain't at each other's house. We're not texting. We're not, we not at, you didn't help me raise my baby. Right. None of that. I don't really know um, you like that. I don't really know you like that. But we did all meet at the same time. So I did meet her at the time when she was with um, mm -hmm. Michael. So... I did have a cordial meeting with them, but past that, it was just that. We saw each other in different events, and right. that was that. So basically, what to clear it all up, you was not plotting on her husband. No, I was not plotting. I was actually like my And she done went on to have two more husbands, ain't it? Um, and nine more children. Twelve? Mine. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what does Miss Ann have to say about this, Miss Ann Nesby? My grandma has been the biggest supporter um they support whatever i do anyways and of course you know i keep them up in the tea all the time mm -hmm. um to just keep doing me her her words are always to continue to do you because at the end of the day the truth always comes to light mm -hmm. so people are going to say whatever they want to say but at the end of the day it all the it truth all don't need no explanation yeah you don't need no explanation for that right you correct know, if, right. if it is what it is it's gonna come out whether you hide it or not. All right. So, do you have any plans on making any new footprints in the in the uh, music industry right now? Like a new album, new song, I, new. I do. I do. I have um, unapologetically me that I released last year as just like an opening single to just let everybody know that I'm getting back into the music thing. So right now I'm working on a new project and we're looking for summer, summer spring release. Okay. Um, and then in the meantime, just gearing up for Broadway. a couple other shows, um, and a movie I can't speak about right now. Oh, but it's coming. Come on, lady, movie, <laughs> yes. Um, but it is coming, and yeah, being a mom. Other than that, all right. Dealing with Egypt. Now, my last question for you is: What is the legacy that you'd like to leave behind? Being unapologetic, that, that, that is the unapologetic le legacy, honestly. Um, I'm not sorry for anything that I've done, that I've seen, that oh. I've said. Mm -hmm. um, who you know. Who I know, where I be at. Mm -hmm. um, if you are on any of my social medias, that mm -hmm. is really who I am. Yes, I, I am a part of what I like to say, a full crew of golden boys, and usually I am the only fish. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you may see me sing a few gospel songs here. That doesn't mean that I'm a gospel artist. I just love God, and I have a relationship with him, and I'm glad to know him. But then you may flick on something else and see me duck walking and, and living for the kids. Yes. And then if I'm not doing that, yeah, you may see me uh, all hugged up and booed up. With your bae. With Bay, like I'm a human being, and yeah. I'm I, I'm refusing to allow the industry to change me or mold me and mold who I am and what I should be. And to direct your path, yeah, you're the master of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. That's no right. limit to the sky. No limit to the but sky. The one that you put on it. No limit, soldier. I thought I told you. No limit, soldier. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Miss Paris Bennett, this has been a wonderful time sitting here with you, doing this spotlight on you, and, you know, getting down to a few basic things that I really want to know. I don't give a damn about all that gossip shit that the people say out there in the street, because they gossip about me, too. Oh, I know. You know, I don't give a fuck about none of that bullshit. The only That's thing I, I give a fuck you. about is getting to the money, not hurting nobody in the fucking process, mm -hmm. and, and getting myself together. When it's time for me to cross over the threshold to get to heaven. That's it. That's okay. all I'm concerned about. Getting what's mine here. Doing what I need to do. Inspiring others to get what's theirs. Yes. Living my life. Not fucking with nobody. <laughs> Minding my business. Minding my business. Not fucking with nobody out here in these streets. None of that. Doing me. And I like being a role model for my kids. Yeah. That's it. That's all. And I'm and I'm and and you just made me happy by saying that to me, Miss Paris Bennett. And Brandy is still eating Monica. <laughs> and we are. See now, this this 
<laughs> this is where you trying to you trying to bait me into a debate. But I'm gonna fuck you up on this song association. I'm gonna make you sing all that bitch shit. I'm gonna make you sing all Monica shit. That's what I'm gonna make you up like say all her shit. Eat, though. You didn't show one line that she was eating baby. Not one. Must you do the things you do? You keep on talking like a fool. You need to know it's her that don't do it. We're we're gonna be a debate with this. We are. We're gonna do it on Song Association, <laughs> okay. honey, after we done with this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been my first segment of a spotlight session with T.S. Massa. My first guest has been Miss Paris Bennett. If you don't know who she are, bitch, go to Google's. Google's is your friend. And don't sit down and try to only know her by the mess, the shade, the late bullshit that goes on. And know her by her talent. Know her by her works. Know her by me. her contributions. And follow her. Tell them where they can follow you at. You can follow me on Instagram at Miss Paris Bennett. That's M I S S mm -hmm. Paris Bennett. Two N's, two T's. Yes. Or you can go on my Facebook because I'm always on there. I love talking to people. And having a good time. And Snapchat, Egypt's mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you over here, honey. And, you know, we follow you and we we love to hear you sing. And, you know, we ain't done with you yet because we about to do a song association with you in a minute after we drank a little wine. So, <laughs> so I'm going to get in there with you with my deep voice, baritone, having ass, bitch. I love you, too. I baby. love you, baby. Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. Now, if y'all don't watch song association, Miss Paris, I want you to take us out with a little tiny bit of something that's on your heart right now at the top of your head. Mm. What's on the top of your head right now that you could take us out with? Somebody loves you, baby. Oh. Whoa. Uh huh. Somebody loves you, baby. Ooh. And you know exactly who it is. Somebody loves you, baby. Ooh. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, is how you end the motherfucking spotlight. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see y'all next Friday. Bye, y'all. <laughs>